Okay, everyone, this is a little practice session. I'm going to be speaking at the Inventors Roundtable in two days, and I'm doing a little rehearsal, so this is my presentation, and we're going to go ahead and begin. Sheath Underwear is my company. If you build it, they will come. Maybe. Okay? I'm Robert Patton. I'm the CEO of Sheath Underwear. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the Inventors Roundtable whatever conference we are here. Um, if you're not familiar with the Adventures Roundtable, you should check it out. If you're local to in Colorado Springs, Denver, Rita Crompton is uh, the host and she was kind enough to invite me to speak here with no experience and I do appreciate it because I'm gonna tell you my story. Thank you, Rita. Thank you everyone for giving me your time and um, hopefully I can provide some value what I've learned is that you cannot be afraid to fail. So Michael Jordan said, I've failed over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Those are wise words, okay? If you don't succeed, try, try again. We've all heard that. We're all inventors or aspiring inventors, so this is the place where we can share our experiences. What I'm going to go over is how where it all began, some some of the steps in my particular process, uh, where we are now. We're gro currently this year scheduled to gross a million dollars, and we've been doubling our revenue annually since 2013, which I'll get into. And the goal at some point is to gross annually over one billion dollars. So it all began in 2009. It was. Christmas here, but it was summer in Iraq. Okay, so it was hot, it was very hot. I was a soldier, had all my gear on, I was on a mission, and I was very uncomfortable. And you've heard the phrase, necessity is the mother of invention. That was what created sheath, okay? And I wasn't initially trying to create some product to bring to the market and become a millionaire. I was just trying to make something for myself. And I believe that is what will sell. You have to believe in the product yourself. It has to be something that you truly want and value or think that would be valuable for you. Don't lie to yourself. Don't just try to make something that you think people are going to want. You have to know that it's going to work because that's the type of like dedication you're going to need like need to to fuel your purpose. Okay? <laughs> so, I came up with the idea, I was using it for myself, and as I was talking to people, they were saying it was a good idea, maybe you should bring it to the market, but I wasn't sure, I figured I would, should try to see if someone else had already invented it, so I did some research, as we should all do if you're inventing something. And I found someone who had invented the product in 1989 in China, and so I was like, it's already been invented. Can I still bring it to the market? I believe that this patent had already expired. It was 1989. This was over 20 years. So I was like, well, I can still bring it to market. Whoever came with this, up with the idea originally did not, did not bring it to the market. In fact, I found another person who had invented something similar, but his was a des design patent. And as you may know, design patents do not provide that much protection or whatever. So I, knew that the utility patent had already expired, so this design patent was not going to protect against the functionality, so I took this design, modified it, took out the fly, and created my own. So I just, I, I created it and started, and, and I, I <laughs> went ahead with manufacturing, okay? And we'll get to that in a second, but you know, you may or may not know that there are thousands of patents, maybe more, hundreds of thousands of patents that are not on the market. Ideas are easy. Follow through is the hard part. You have to be committed. That's why I have this back tattoo. Once you quit, it's over, okay? You have to be willing to dedicate 20 years of your life without pay in order to be successful. That type of commitment is what is necessary. 
you have to force yourself not to quit because it's so easy to quit. You know, like any obstacle, the first sign of an obstacle, most people are going to quit. Don't be that person. The universe is not going to give it away. Yeah, you're going to be tested. Your will is going to be tested. You have to overcome the obstacles. There is a light at the end of the tunnel if you do not quit. And if you truly believe in your product, some products may not make it. That's something that you're going to have to realize. But if you truly believe in it, other people are going to believe in it also. That's a fact. You're not that different from everyone, everyone else. If you like it, other people are going to like it. You're going to find your audience. Okay? All you need, like you've heard of a thousand true fans. You just need to find those fans. And if you, to reiterate, if you really believe in it, other people will also. I got the concept, but because it had already been invented, we decided to focus on branding. And we, we went ahead and brought the idea to life. Just because you invent something, though, doesn't mean that the market is going to accept it. And I'm going over these like principles here, but you, know, you have to have the purpose, the drive, the passion. And you have to have patience. This thing does not happen overnight. I'm losing people, but that's OK. In 2010, uh, it was about a year later, we, dis we developed our first production, and I rushed it. I, I was super excited about the releasing the product, and I got the samples back, and they, they seemed good enough, but when I received the production and started handing them out to people, we got feedback only to find out that it, was not, it wasn't good enough, and there was a problem with the pouch. If you didn't know, the sheath underwear, the, the idea behind sheath underwear is that there's a pouch on the inside for the boys to keep, your, keep you isolated from your inner thighs so that there's no sticking. It's way better than regular underwear. Regular underwear, you just put them on, you smash yourself into your groin, and it's hot, and it's a mess, and it's gross. We want everything to be separated so that it's cool and dry and comfortable. But this did not, this was the, this pouch was too high and it was it was uncomfortable. So that was a huge setback. And I had just spent all of my money on this this production. So take notes. And uh, you can ask questions at the end. And so I didn't quit though at this particular point. I was very determined. And we'll get to that in about two seconds. I didn't have the money to do another production. So my idea was that I was gonna fix all of these, this thousand, my first initial thousand pairs. And so I went to a tailor. I asked if I could man his counter in return for using his equipment to fix all 1,000 of the production and uh, and, and in the process, kind of learn how to, to improve my initial concept. I worked there for a year. We had, um, like I said, we had initially rushed the production. The pouch was too high. I had spent all my money, and I went to work for a tailor. But we did, I did come up with a better design. So uh, we decided to then bring this new design to the market. And we launched in 2013 through Kickstarter. It was successful. We exceeded our goal. We're on top of the world. Life is good. And we get the, we get, we got our batch. We shipped out all the orders. Everyone's happy. We're getting more orders. We sell out of our most popular colors, black and gray. And we reordered black and gray only to find out that the pouch was not as it was on the first production and customers were not happy about the, this second shipment. So that put us dead in the water once again. However, I still didn't quit. And it was, you know, like the unit, because I didn't quit, I feel like the universe rewarded me personally. Uh, a second, a third, this is our third manufacturer at this particular point. And they had, they had asked if they could send us some samples of their work. Uh, so I sent them our prototype. 
and what they sent us back was better than what I had sent them. It was a beautiful thing. I remember when I got them, even though like we had already failed, I knew that this new product would work. I knew it would work. And I remember like whenever I was in doubt, I would go to my closet and I'd put them on and they were so comfortable. And it just, I, like, uh, I was reassured that I was on the right track. So that nightmare was massive. We had that unsellable shipment. It, the, the crowdfunding that we ri originally got was wasted. We had to do another campaign and we learned, but we learned from our mistakes. Um, we assessed the product, we adjusted it through this new manufacturer, made the changes, and I went ahead at that point and decided to create a design patent because I figured we should have some sort of protection. Um, it's not functional protection, but at least it would be protected over the design. What, one thing we learned at that particular point was don't miss deadlines. I submitted the patent in 2014, received correspondence from USPTO, and, but I did not turn the page. I didn't see that I was supposed to respond with some additional requirements that the examiner wanted. I just thought I was, I was waiting to hear that it got patented. I had never done it before and I was doing it all myself. Oops. <laughs> but we still decided to move forward. Without a patent, with a patent, without a patent, I was gonna bring the product to market because it was just a design patent anyways. So we decided to focus on branding. We did a second Kickstarter. It was also successful. With this new manufacturer, with a new design, higher quality materials, we exceeded our goal once more and uh, our initial backers kind of followed us for the second Kickstarter and that's where we really took off. It was 2014 with our 2.0 and it was a beautiful thing. So that's, from that point we've, we've been moving steadily, we've been d doubling our sales annually, but it's, there's a lot more to it. So, with the positive reception of the 2.0, we began building the business, building customer relationships. Customer service is huge. You have an idea, that's great. Customers like it, that's great. But you have to take, then you take care of those customers and you keep them coming back. You have them telling their friends and their friends are gonna tell their friends and their friends are gonna tell their friends. And that was a turning point in our success for protecting the family jewels. As you can see, the concept is right here. Put your boys in the pouch. It keeps things isolated from your inner thighs. Sheathunderwear.com, that's where you can get these. Um, but it still didn't stop there. We kept innovating. We, we came up with new fabric. This was our 3.0, very popular. We have a lot of UFC fighters, MMA fighters, Olympic athletes wearing them now, and this is about the time where we started um, promoting through athletic uh, athletes, uh, professional athletes, and that's another that's uh, something you'll get to once you develop the product and get it to the market, and that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit. It's not just the idea; it's following through and taking it from the idea to the market and then growing consistently. Some people have had these successful Kickstarters only to like flop at the end. They, they make this great sales pitch, but maybe they don't follow through with taking care of their customers and, and getting people to help promote your product. You're gonna have to do that at some point for most products or for, for this particular product, that's the case. We're an underwear company, you know, if you're selling washers or whatever your particular idea is, may not apply here, but this is my, our story. Um, but there's always room for improvement. And it started off with this single pouch. It was great, people are loving it. But like I said, we keep innovating. And that's when we came up with a dual pouch. I, I had like a vision. And so at this point, because the functionality had changed, I thought I could then create a utility patent. And it was at that point where we decided to go ahead and file for the current patent that is pending. 
Okay, and this is our most popular product. It's the Sheath 4.0. It's got a pouch for the boys, but it's also got separation for the, for the Frank, the beans. Uh, extremely comfortable, especially in hot situations, but not only for that, it's for everyday use. You know, you can sleep in them, you can ride, and in a, on a plane, it's like, there's really good because you're not going to have to adjust. And it's kind of embarrassing when you have to adjust. You're always like looking around and it's not something that's flattering. So most people will like do some weird thing in their pocket and adjust, but with sheath, you won't have to do that. And therefore you won't find yourself in that compromising position. That's what the, and it's not only for that, but it just so happens to be very helpful in that particular instance with, when you're with a girl or whatever. You're in a line at the supermarket, you're uncomfortable, you're not adjusting yourself. You're already adjust, you're comfortably situated in the sheath pouch, especially in this dual pouch. And it's been, an ama we have had an amazing reception. So we decided to protect the idea and we needed to submit, but we needed to submit it before releasing to the public. And I was just gonna not, I was just gonna do no patent again, but I figured we might as well go ahead and protect it. And so we submitted the patent. This was 2016, okay? And um, I believe we submitted the patent February 11th, 2017. It gave us, it was a non, no, this was the provisional patent. That just buys you a year of protection so that you can submit the full patent, the non-provisional patent. And we, <laughs> we submitted the non-provisional patent um, a week later than we were supposed to. Make sure you read the dates correctly. If you take anything from this, read the dates. I was looking at the date that they had uh, sent out the correspondence when I should have been looking at the day where they, the initial filing date. So as you can see, it is, we submitted it on 2019, I mean, uh, February 19th, which was exactly one week after the deadline, but I thought it was before they had mailed it to me. So I thought I had a, I thought I had a year from the date they mailed it to me, but that's not true. It was a year from the initial filing date. However, we still submitted the provisional patent and non-provisional patent. I guess I should get that right. Non-provisional patent, and it, um, so we're we're in that particular process at the moment. We file. Um, if you need a patent attorney talk to me afterwards. I'm going through some guy out of the University of Texas, Joe Jong. He's a professor at, at the University of Texas and he's working with us to uh, finalize our protection for this um, intellectual property. We did lose protection for, for the previous year, but we do have it going uh, currently. It's in, a, in a, It's in the patent pending stage as of February 2018, uh, but we still continue to focus on branding. That's a huge part of releasing a product. It's not just an idea, there's a story behind it, and there's an image, and there's, you know, like, how people see you, and you want to be seen as heroic, you know, like superheroes, and that's the way I try to present our brand. <coughs> It was the sheath 4.0 that is getting us our current growth. And um, I don't know what this small hiccup is. Can you like write a note on that or something if you're doing that? Um, it, be, it quickly became our most popular design. We've since done away with the initial 2.0. We do have our 3.0 single pouch, but our best sellers are the, the 4.0 dual pouch. And, We've been consistently releasing new options with this particular design because it's protected and no one else can copy it at the moment. Although there are a couple other pouch designs out there, ours is very unique and we're hoping that we get the final protection when, when the patent is approved. And we have since been broadening her, our horizons. We have distribution in UK and Canada and we're currently shipping out of San Antonio, which is where our foundation began, but we're um, 
in the process of growing and we use Olympic athletes to help promote that growth. As you can, these guys are here locally in Colorado Springs. We've got some bobsledders and some, these are pent athletes, super cool guys. And it's cool to be in a position to work with Olympic athletes and UFC fighters, MMA uh, um, practitioners, and many more. We have goalball, uh, cold ball athletes I mean um, lots of different representatives we do not discriminate anyone and everyone can represent sheath not to be weird but we have transgender models representing sheath we, I mean we do not discriminate period and we've actually released a women's design that was a spin-off from the comfort of the fabric every time we would go to a trade show women would come to our booth and, and ask, do you have a women's line? And, and it didn't make sense for branding, as I'm talking about branding, to have a women's line because it was a pouch underwear, it was a men's pouch underwear company. But as time passed and, and more and more women asked if we had a you know women's line, I figured why not open it up to the other 50% of the market? So we did, developed a women's prototype and it's actually going very well so we ha we promote them together and it's uh, you know just adds more product to sell to the public and, and generate funds and that sort of thing currently this is our latest design it's very similar to the the 4.0 it just has it has longer legs and it has like a cooler waistband it's the sheath 5 and we're not stopping there we actually have base layers coming out soon for hunters and hikers. It's, it's winter, our winter's coming up. So it's the, the long legged version of she that still has the dual pouch. That's coming out next month, just in time for Christmas. We're always innovating. You never stop because the market keeps changing and you wanna just keep developing new things. We're probably gonna get into socks we're gonna get into. We're gonna turn into a, a completely a lifestyle brand, but like we're gonna have we have shirts and hats, and much more is gonna come down the line. But it all started with that initial concept of the pouch, and and we just never stopped trying to innovate. And I suggest you do the same. Just because you have an an idea doesn't mean it's you stick with it and keep it st uh, static. You want to. Always and always be innovating, because someone else is going to do it if you don't. Um, where we are now, the business is booming, and seemingly consistent inventory <laughs> shortages. We continue to sell out of our products. That's been a challenge. Hopefully, you run into that challenge, um, but we're just doing what we can to make sure we keep product on hand so that we are able to sell consistently. We're mastering the trade of being a, an entrepreneur. It's a, there's going to be obstacles. There's you got to figure out a way around it. Where are we going? Vegas, baby. We're going to Vegas. So I, to, I just said we were shipping out of San Antonio, but we've cur we've recently outgrown our current facility, and we're taking it to a fulfillment center in Vegas, which will allow for full scalability. Um, where are we going? Like I said, we've been doubling rent revenue annually since 2013, but the goal next year is to 5x. And we're doing what we think is necessary in order to make that happen. Within 10 years, as I said at the beginning, we're hoping to be grossing a billion dollars in sales annually. Started off as a soldier, obtained my MBA while developing this process. Um, well, I started off as a soldier and I got out to pursue my dream and I obtained my MBA while developing the business and I'm currently living the dream. This is our current catalog. You can go and see it at sheathunderwear.com. We do have most of our inventory available at the moment, but get it while it's there because we seem to run out frequently, but we're getting that under control. But hopefully we run out again, because that's a good thing. 
means your product is in demand. So, do you have any questions? All right, we're gonna stop. 24 minutes. <laughs>